the Academy Award winning actress Anna Paquin. And from X-Men Apocalypse, James McAvoy. And what to feed your kids as we continue our Take Charge of Your Food Week. Plus, Fred Savage returns for another day at the co-host desk. All next on Live. time I saw him. Yeah. So. And I just That's felt so. that vibe. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, happy birthday to everybody whose birthday it is on May 24th, 26th. What? What? <laughs> oh. The fact that you don't remember is upsetting. I don't even want to have to tell you. Yeah, that's right. Um, hey, do you know my do you know my co-host today? It's your friend Fred Savage. popular demand. I said it before and I and I mean it today. Oh, that's, that's by popular nice. demand. I'm very yes. happy to be yes. here. You know, Fred, I don't say this to everybody, but you you get us here. I feel like <laughs> you really I do. I feel very at home. I really like everybody. I art more. The yes. esteemed Art Moore uh, picked out my uh, socks today. Oh, let's see. Let's see. How do you do? We both love socks, and yes. he gave me four pairs of socks, and I chose these socks. That's so nice. And my, I had a couple outfits to wear. Okay. And I did a this or that, and Art helped get me dressed this morning. Okay, because I was wondering. Art usually hangs out in my room with me, and I was like, "Where's Art?" And then I, <laughs> and then I see Gelman run by the makeup and hair room, almost like dancing, like a spring in his step and I thought he was coming in to see me he was going in to see you he was like I've got items to talk about save him from art really oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. no I call art I love hanging out with art he's the best so I feel very at home you guys dress me and you know get yeah. me taken care of it's I, I love it I love it here oh, well welcome home it, thank yes, you thank we're you we're happy to have you for um, sure. it's a pleasure so what did you do last night now you're in town yes you are in town alone, right? I'm no, alone. No wife, no children. Yes. What does Fred Savage do in New York City alone? I went to a deli. Oh my God. <laughs> That's where we saw each other. That's where we saw each other. So I went, I love walking around town. Yeah. And so I went downtown and I went to Russ and Daughters, which oh, is a, just, a, I mean. just a classic New York deli. It's been there forever. And I went to the counter and I got some sable. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And I got a little, they have great um, fruit and dried fruits and nuts. So I got a little bag to snack as I'm walking around town. And I walked down the street, down Houston, to the Angelica Theater, which I love. It's this fantastic um, uh, independent movie house that has just terrific movies. And uh, I go without a plan uh, because I just know that whenever I go there, there's going to be something interesting to of course, see. Of course. So I get a ticket, and they're like, oh, are you bringing your own snacks into the movie theater? And I'm like, oh, yeah, because I had these snacks from Russ and Daughters. Right. I'm like, I'm not, I mean, I know I have snacks and I'm going to the movies. It's just some gavelta fish. Right. It's not a snack. <laughs> but just because I, like, I'm not bringing snacks to the movies. Like, I just so happen to have snacks and I'm going to the movies, but that's not why I brought them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean. Yeah, I'm not trying to, like, I just, oh, I have, I can't. I'm not gonna not go to the movies because I have snacks. Right. So I think he's like, all right, go ahead, go in. And I go in, and there's all these cam all these lights and cameras, and I run into my friend uh, Beth Bears, who's okay. on yes, Two Broke Girls, Beth who Bears, is that's fantastic, terrific. Yeah. terrific. And she is there with her boyfriend Michael Gladys, who's an incredible actor. Okay. And he's on a new show called um, Feed the Beast on AMC. Oh yes, yes, yes. And there's a whole premiere at the oh. Angelica Theater. And look, are you here for the premiere? I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not here. <laughs> 
for the premiere. And you so we start talking, and she goes, and why do you have your own snacks? Why do you, <laughs> do you do that? Do you bring your own snacks to the movies? And I'm like, I'm not bringing my own snacks. I have snacks. Right. So then I got to the movie, and I'm like, you know what? If everyone thinks I brought snacks anyway, I'm just going to eat my snacks. Yes. Insane. I had dried peaches and saw a movie and what some nice things. What was the movie steak. you saw? The Lobster. Oh, okay. Tell me about The Lobster. Oh, my gosh. The Lobster is this incredible movie um, with Colin Farrell and Rachel Weitz and um, uh, John C. Uh, not, uh, yeah, John C. Riley. Okay. And uh, it's, I, I, I can't describe it. It's the most interesting movie. It's funny. It's heartbreaking. I, I, I can't describe it. I, I've never seen anything like it. It looks beautiful. Is it about a lobster? It's about, <laughs> it's a, about a, a, our society where if you're single, you have 45 days to find a mate or you turn into any animal of your choosing. <laughs> So Colin Farrell wants to be a lobster. I I don't blame him one iota. Yeah. That sounds like a good choice. Um, did, now now I'm a you know I'm here alone, night on a town. You've heard my crazy story. Yeah. What did you do last oh, night? Oh, I actually did something last yes. night. I what know, your, I know. They're like, did you, you live did? it up? I yeah, we did. Um, our friend um, Barry Sonnenfeld and his wife Susan Ringo are in, in town, and uh, Mark shot a movie with Barry uh, last year um, over the summer, and so we we made a plan to have a meal with them a while ago, and we went to the Four Seasons restaurant, it's the closing. famous that's closing. So you got to get it in now. You got to get it in now, and we and I've never I've been to a lots of events at the Four Seasons, but I've never actually made it to A, the bar, or B, to get any food, because I'm always, like, it's a work it's event, and it's right. packed, and people, like, get you in a corner, and they're like, why can't I get on your show? Why does Gelman hate me? And I sit there, and I'm like... You don't hate anybody, do you? And I just stand... No, no but they always assume they that it's Gelman, yeah. right? So, and when, when it's all... In, in fact, it's art it's that art. hates... I, I sit know. there, and I go, it's really... It's yeah. not Gelman, it's art. So I, but, so I finally made it into the restaurant with our friends. We sat, this restaurant has this beautiful reflection pool in the middle of the restaurant. Like a, it's a beautiful water feature. It's incredible. I had, you've been there. I was there I, for the same, when I was here um, over the summer with my, uh, with my wife, we went because we knew it was closing and it's this institution, a landmark. Yes. And we, for the, we wanted to go just have a meal there. How was your meal? It was incredible. I had the soft shell crab, uh, um, uh, special, um, which I've, which I've decided that if I was in that movie, maybe I'd be the soft shell crab. Right, because they're delicious. Because they're delicious. Yeah, yeah. But they're here for all a short time only. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but, I, but I had that; it was very good. You know, and I read they're having a um, an auction, I, uh, and okay. they're auctioning off everything from the restaurant. So I want to get those martini glasses. We yeah. were discussing them at length. About what? To, so you yes. want to get the glasses? Yes, we were discussing. We were discussing, and it's funny because I was talking to a lot of the waiters and our waiter who had been there for um, six, 16 years, he's the new, he's the new, the guy. new guy. He's the new guy. So these waiters have been there for, you know, <laughs> decades and decades. So it's just so um, old. I'm hoping this. they pick up and start again. Well, there's apparently a new place they're moving to a yes. few blocks away, yep. but that owning a piece of history, like the glass, having your eye on the glasses, that's yes. so cool. Regis um, owns a Tiffany lamp from uh, Tavern on the Green yeah. because Tavern on the Green had an auction. Oh, that's and, great. And he and Joy uh, went and they got a Tiffany lamp, which I thought was so special. It's incredible. That's, yeah. They have a little piece of history like that. Yeah, to have something. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not setting my sights in... You know, so high, but right. I would if I could get a, a martini glass. Martini seems glasses. very I mean, that seems, attainable. Seems doable. Get a martini glass. Seems doable. Well, there was there was an auction of a, a celebrity a long time ago. This is going back years and years and years. And and the cast of all my children, a, a group of girls and I, we decided that we would go in together to get a piece of this memorabilia, right. and we were outbid with all of our combined resources almost immediately. Like this, we were able to place the starting bid and then we were outbid. It goes crazy. It goes crazy. So I'm not, I'm not banking on the fact. I'm just hoping that maybe. I'll I will team up with you. I will chip in. Okay. We will get a martini glass and together. And we'll have, and we'll put it right With two straws and we'll just drink yes. it in the morning. Yes. Um, it's, uh,
It's raining outside. It is raining it's outside. It's raining outside. I know. Welcome to spring in New York. Not, no, I'm not, I'm very unaccustomed to the rain. Oh, well, but get used yeah. to it, honey. Yeah, it's insane. Um, and I know, I feel like there's a lot of comparison, like New York weather to Washington, D.C. weather. Uh -huh. And apparently it's been the rainiest spring ever in Washington, D.C. It's rained 19 of 23 days. Mm. Um, which, so I, I'll take a little rain today and not, I mean, Washington, D.C., that's, you guys are... Really, there. really doing it. Really fighting the fight out there. Man. Stay dry, DC. It's such a nice outdoor Stay. town. Too. Yeah, it's I a know, really I know. nice outdoor around. town. Um, yeah. And then, do you see, do you do you eat? Speaking of outdoors, do you yeah. eat outdoors? Do you yeah, like outdoors? I like an outdoor dining experience. Yeah, an outdoor dining, dining experience. Dining al fresco. Al fresco. <laughs> that's what. You, that's al fresco. That's right? a, that's <laughs> the sign for fresco. Yeah. So, but there's some dangers outside. If you see this video, there's a video. No. Do we have the video of Wait. the of the seagull of the hungry seagull? Oh well. Wait, look at this video. Yeah. Hey, well, he's not even outside. <laughs> look, he comes in, doors open. <laughs> Look at that guy. Look, and out he goes. Doesn't yep. even pay. Bye. And no one said a thing. I paid for the snacks I brought to the movie theater, and everyone was like, oh, you shouldn't do that. And that seagull didn't didn't pay anything. You know, when we were in we were in Australia years ago, Michael, my son, was four years old. So this is how long ago it was. Lola was a baby. I was pregnant with Joaquin. He always says, he's like, we have to go back to Australia because I didn't have a good view. That's what he said. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, I was buying a hot dog. We were at uh, Warner Brothers World. They had like uh, their own, like we have Disney World. They have Warner Brothers World there. And uh, I bought a hot dog and and I'm looking at this sign and I sort of hand, I hand the hot dog to Michael, I hand it back to him. He's tiny, he's this big, I hand it to him. And I look at the sign and it shows like, it's like a mom and it's it's like a thing with the air like the the cross through yeah, it don't, and it shows don't. it shows a mom handing a hot dog to her child. And I'm like, why is that like that? And I turn around and my son is being attacked by seagulls. <laughs> Anymore. It's an outline of my son with just seagulls all over it. <laughs> so that's protecting the kids from the seagulls. So they were like, literally, do don't. not hand your child, don't hand your small child food. The seagulls will come. And they did. They descended. You know, he's fine now. Right. He's over it. 14 years later. And how does he feel about birds? Is he okay he's, with birds? You know, he's not a big seagull fan. Uh -huh. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not. Or gonna... hot dogs. Does he eat hot dogs? He still eats hot dogs. Or does he eat hot dogs? He's like, he, yeah, he looks around. <laughs> I know people who here loves their cat, loves their cat more than that. So there, there are two, do you have a cat? I don't have a cat. Okay. So there are two kinds of people in the world, cat lovers and everybody else, right? <laughs> so, so, right? You people who love their cat, I have my girlfriend loves her cat so much that she will send me pictures and she's like, you forgot to tell my cat how beautiful she was today. And I'm like, oh, I'm I, sorry, yeah, I didn't forget. you're beautiful. <laughs> Anyway, so um, this is amazing. This uh, this guy loved his cat so much. This couple, Tara and Jason O'Mara, and they came up with this device because they were always watching their cats groom each other, and I guess they felt like left out of the action. Oh no! So they came up, they came up with this device called um, the Licky Brush, and it allows you to bond with your cat like a cat. Now I'm going to show you how it works with a Gelman brought in his cat. Oh. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Gelman. Hi. Gelman, what? Oh my God. <laughs> Is that cat moving? I was not prepared. <laughs> He's waiting, he's waiting. Okay, let me, let me get him. Thank you. For you, good Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I want to understand 
what exactly you're applauding. <laughs> because I know we're supposed to, but I don't know <laughs> what we're encouraging. <laughs> this is not yeah, behavior yeah. we should be encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's fun for the whole family. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, it allows you to really, uh, it's a Kickstarter campaign, yeah, the Licky Brush, so yeah. if you uh, yeah. are looking yeah. to, yeah. 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 Excuse me, sir. <laughs> You're next. <laughs> I feel like you raised your like, hand about no. the cat. You would use this, yeah. I feel. Yeah. It, listen, I you... <laughs> I, th I think it, it allows you to get closer to your cat. It uh -huh. allows you the ability to behave more like your cat pretty soon. <laughs> I'm just gonna say one thing. I was told backstage, this is what I was told backstage. They're like, oh, the cat, it's a shame. It used to work, but it doesn't move or it doesn't do anything anymore. We tried changing its batteries and it doesn't work, so we took the batteries out. So this is a battery-free cat that is now just... This is amazing. I would have this cat. I would use. I would, this is a great, great cat. cat ever. Wait till it. Uh, wait till it takes a. a, a, a it does a lot of talent. Yeah. Right. Wait till it. <laughs> wait till it. Oh my God. Needs to use the litter box. I'm gonna move your cat, Gelman. Okay. okay I'm gonna put your cat over Thank here. Thank you so much. Be it's, nice. No, I love it. I love it. It's, it's just, nice and groomed now. No, it's making me nervous that it doesn't have a battery in it and it's meowing and moving all over. What does it do when it's battery powered, when it's on? <laughs> it's like, literally like, yes, you rang? Yeah. <laughs> I don't need a battery, I'm a cat. <laughs> we have a huge show today. We have a huge show. <laughs> oh my God, the cat's still going. Big, big show. Anna Coughlin's here. Anna yes. Coughlin. Uh, we have James McAvoy, who is here. Yes. Phenomenal actor. Can you take charge of your food week when you find out what are the essential foods for your child? Oh my gosh, any fussy eaters here? Yeah. What about, oh, yo, I had a feeling, yeah, you look like you might be. I feel like gonna, you're all kinds of trouble. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna get you to eat things you never thought you'd eat. Uh -huh. Yep, <laughs> yep. Okay, it's uh, time for Spring Skies Travel Trivia, everybody. That is my favorite part of the show. Yep. You are outstanding. Hey, she's all the way from uh, San Francisco. That's Jan Davis, everybody. Yeah. Great job. Great job. Uh, all right, so on the phone, we have Mary Gula from Hanover Township, Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. Hey, Mary. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Great photo. See, I'm really on Something this photo tells me crusade. That's not Hanover Township, PA. Oh. <laughs> Where are you there? No. I am in Mexico with my family in um, Chichen Itza. Oh, oh Chichen Itza. So cool. I've been there. Yeah, of course. That's so beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah. loved it. So, Mary, what do you what do you do? What do you do for a living? I own a children's resale store. It's a consignment store where we buy and resell children's clothing and items. Oh, oh that's fantastic. Yeah, that's smart. I'm glad you clarified because you said children's resale. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought for a second, maybe yeah. you just like, you know, right. yeah, you're tired of your yeah. kid. Yeah. Start it up. Bring him in and we'll resell him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mary takes care of it. Mary, uh, that's listen, really smart. We're going to spin the wheel, see what you're playing for, okay? Great prize, the Buccaneer in St. Croix. Seven days, six nights in a deluxe oceanfront room. It includes what, Fred? Three meals daily? Yeah. Who could eat that much food? <laughs> this trip is provided in part by Hotels.com. It's a prize valued at $9,500. You have 20 seconds, Mary, and only one guest. Good luck. All right, here you go, Thank Mary. You. Ready? Uh, yeah. On yesterday's show, we talked with actress Amelia Clark. What film did Amelia Clark say she was filming when she first read the book, Me Before You? Terminator. Yes! 
Congratulations. You and a guest will enjoy seven days and six nights at the Buccaneers St. Croix. Founded in the 17th century and family run for generations, the Buccaneer in St. Croix is both historic and modern, blending old world charm with warm hospitality and the amenities expected by today's traveler. The Buccaneer is a premier destination resort for golf, tennis, water sports, weddings, honeymoons, and family vacations. Your prize is valued at approximately $9,500. Congratulations. Thank you. Now you get to help make the day of a lucky member of our studio audience who will receive eight play settings of American-made fine china from Lennox. Ooh. Valued at more than $500. How much more? We can't say. <laughs> <laughs> Please pick a number between 1 and 229. 131. <laughs> Take charge of your food week with tips for keeping your kids healthy. James McAvoy. And coming up next, Anna Paquin. as well as the runner-up couple, which will both be decided tonight. Yeah. So tonight. tonight, that is happening. Gotta check it out. And from the uh, series Arrow, Stephen Amell. Yeah. Yes. And Seal. Seal. Seal is gonna be here. So you're not gonna host. You'll watch, okay? <laughs> it's still gonna be good. Seal is gonna be there. Yeah, Seal. Maybe he'll sing. Yeah, that'd be amazing. That'd be amazing if he sang. Gelman is still gonna sing? You never know. <laughs> that means he doesn't know. Yeah. That's, that's gonna teach you he how hasn't to speak. talked to him yet. He's I'm gonna, gonna call teach you how back. to speak fluent Gelman. You're gonna, <laughs> okay, it's good. a fast language. Good. Okay, now we know our first guest for her roles in The Piano, uh, the X-Men series, and True Blood. Please welcome Oscar-winning actress Anna Paquin. <laughs> You know, I did for a really long time, like 22 years. So yeah. that's probably because yeah, you're always here promoting something yeah. you've done. Do you ever have time off? Well, after True Blood was done, um, I kind of took my belated maternity leave. Oh, yeah. I How belated? Well, I had the babies after season five, right? And then we did season six and season seven, and like three months after I gave birth, kind of thing. So that was sort of like quite so a you short. Were, you were owed a trip. Well, yeah. I just owed a little bit of bonding time with my own children. Right. <laughs> um, and so uh, my husband was working in Wales, and so we uh, we, we moved to Wales for oh, basically nice. like six months, which was so beautiful. Oh my god. Oh, yes, yeah, so I was gonna say, and there's some pictures. Oh. I couldn't find any pictures of the daffodils, but it was daffodil season. That's our dog who eats everything. Oh, so beautiful. Um, oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. No, it's stunning. It's absolutely, it's stunning. And it's, you know, the medieval castles and their national animal is a dragon. And I no have- No kidding. Oh yeah, no kidding. The national animal is a dragon? So there's dragons there? <laughs> yes. I mean, and you took your kids. That is. I was really... like, and I have, t I had ta have toddlers. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. There you was you feel nothing. Also, Daddy was shooting a show that was set in medieval Wales, so Daddy had a castle or. Oh my gosh. So that was like, yeah. oh, Daddy Castle. Daddy Castle. Did you I feel? Except Daddy's castle was only actually a front. There was no back on it. But <laughs> they, they, they've seen very odd things on the True Blood set, so like that wasn't the weirdest thing. That's true. Seen. I'm thinking about that. Like they must have seen so much. Seven seasons they, of True well, Blood. Well, they were live for the last right. two. But but I mean, if you count the in utero like experience, then they had a, for a lot. They very a lot. odd early childhood. Did right, you right. feel emboldened after your experiences on True Blood to face dragons and castles? You know what? Um, <laughs> you mean mythical creatures? Yes. yes. Yeah, I feel like I possibly should have like some kind of actual like accreditation. Yeah, from, I like, Yeah, in like right. mythical creature, yeah. fantasy creature dealing with. I mean, after seven years on the show dealing with your mythical creatures, is there any like one moment that stands Prior out for you? X-Men. Yes. yes. Oh, that's also, true. Also, like, lots of mythical creatures. Yeah, I do a lot of stuff that 
doesn't really exist. <laughs> yeah. Like a it's, lot of my make believe really is make. Different <laughs> acting. No, you want to be absolutely. It's, it's you know it's you don't play it for the haha. -ha. You, you you if you don't if you don't commit to it, why is anybody else going to believe that, that really exists? Right. You, you have know, to play it as yeah, real. Yeah, you play it completely seriously. That's true. Otherwise, that's it's a spoof. Right. No, that's why you're so good. That's and amazing. Listen, I'm thinking about you oh, and the you, piano. Like that's the last time you played a regular person dealing with regular. Few very damaged teenagers. Yes. But yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, listen, we have to take a commercial break. We're gonna uh, find out how Anna's new role uh, may have changed history. So let's stick around. Whoa. That's a scene uh, from Roots, which is a four-night series, yes. right? That is airing Memorial Day, Memorial Day and then the following three nights. Yeah. Um, it's very important. Yes. It's an extraordinary um, re working of the original uh, book and miniseries um, and I had the absolute pleasure of watching night one last night at the premiere mm. and it I'm in night four um, and it's chillingly amazingly good and mm. upsetting and beautifully done and yeah. the acting it's just all you know and also just such an incredibly important period of history to be reminded of and in a way that is just so so beautifully told. Mm -hmm. you, know? you play Nancy Holt and my character. She? Nancy was um, is actually a fictional character, so she was not in the book or the original mm -hmm. um, miniseries. Uh, but she is a basically because of the way that we are able to research things now historically. There's a lot more information available than. At, the, at this point than there was when the original series or the book was written. So there's various characters and other elements that have been added to the story that were sort of compilations of people who really did exist, um, but were not specifically an actual person. Mm. Um, so she is somebody who is a, she's a composite and she kind of has this whole Southern slave owning wife thing mm -hmm. going on. Um, and, uh, but it's a little more complicated than that, yeah. so you'll have to watch. It's just find amazing out. to take that on. I mean, not not just that role, but to jump into something like that. Oh, it's, it's intimidating. It's so iconic. I mean, I it's mean, so intimidating. So, yeah. I think to take, to, you know, you want to be, you know, you want to acknowledge what came before, but mm -hmm. you want to do your own thing. Did mm -hmm. you think about that? Did you watch? Well, luckily for me, I, I mean, first of all, because my character real. Mm -hmm. So there was. Blazing a new, yeah, new Yeah, like, new so trail. I wasn't having to, like, go, okay, well, that's what so and so did, and. Oh my God! Um, you could create this yes, on your exactly. own. Yes, um, exactly. Also, it was written or in the original miniseries um, came out, and I grew up in New Zealand, so I actually—I mean, I—I I knew what Roots was, and I understood that significance, sort of, you know, culturally and and whatever. But I hadn't watched it until this came along. So wow. this was the first time I was experiencing. Roots, wow. and so I basically I sat in Wales and you know. Was there other research that, that the role I'm entailed? Probably traumatized my small children because they <laughs> no. watched quite a lot of it with oh me. Oh my gosh! Well, watched. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and and then read you know read Roots, which I had never done, and then an assortment of other books that were more specific to uh, to my character, which again I can't say too much about without completely ruining right. what's quite. Oh, fantastic plot. It just looks sort of amazing. It, it looks starts incredible. May 30th, 9 p.m. on History. Make sure you check out Anna Packwood. The Last King of Scotland and Atonement. Now he reprises his role as Professor X in the new film X Men Apocalypse. Please welcome James McAvoy. You too, you real too. Real pleasure. Welcome back. Real Welcome pleasure. Back. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So I understand that you two have never met, but you no. are familiar with Fred. You grew up watching him, is I, that I true? I grew up watching your show, yeah, the one of years. Really? I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> no totally. Kidding. It was um it was quite a big deal in my house. Uh it felt, even though it was about kids, it felt like much more adult in terms of its approach and stuff. So I felt quite grown up being allowed to watch it. That's Look at you, you so just, you mean, just popped really, up. You were like, <laughs> you're, I'm such a fan of yours. You're oh, such you. an incredible actor. Thank and you. I mean, your films are amazing. I mean, uh, Last King of Scotland, I just, that's okay, why right. I kind of just fell in love yes, with you. Thank you. Thank you. But, 
you're able to bring, you know, whether it's Atonement or Wanted or the X-Men films, you are able to bring a real humanity mm. and simplicity to a huge film. Great. And it's really incredibly difficult to do, I would imagine, especially in X-Men, to be so... Um, to have us care about you so much oh, and be thanks. so grounded, give so much humanity in this insane world is really extraordinary. Yvette, you are doing wonders for my ego right now. Yeah, so. well, <laughs> and, and I think you should get in touch with the Academy and tell them all that. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I guess uh, we yeah. should. Yeah, I've yeah. actually caught you. You know them. Yeah, Larry Academy. I've been, <laughs> been acting for 20 years, never had a sniff. You should help me out. Okay. Um, no, but it's, 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 it's You're it's very kind. Thank you. You're very kind. But you bet you're starting in the theatre, is that right? I did, yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, well, I trained uh, uh, a classical theatre school oh. and then started doing theatre in Glasgow and in Edinburgh and round about Scotland and then a little bit down in London as well and then movies and TV started to happen sort of and that took over a little bit but in the last eight years I've been lucky enough to get back to theatre and work with somebody called Jamie Lloyd again and again who's just an amazing director and, and really been a, it's been an amazing experience actually. I could listen to you talk about anything. <laughs> It's, I've got to say, though, it's, it's the first time that a man has said that to me. Um, but thank you. It's true, it's true. I mean, what can you describe something? Um, describe anything. Well, anything. it's, uh, it's, uh, a oh, no, I'm engine. just going to get, I'm going to get really blue. Okay. I'm going to get really blue. Right. Okay. Well, so let, well, I'll With ask you dude, something, and then you can just cool. talk about that. Okay. Because I know there was, a, you, you've gone through a lot of body transformation for your roles. A little bit, yeah. Not like Christian Bale style, but like, no, but, you know, right. a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. I did a little bit of powerlifting for the movie I did down in Philly with M. Night Shyamalan, uh, which was awesome, actually. I've never yeah. done anything like it. Didn't think I'd enjoy it. It was incredible. Um, and then at the moment, I'm in the process of starting to slim down to get, like, uber skinny for something, which is horrible. Oh, that How do you slim awful. down? Like, what, so what, do you, what happens? Because I'm always I, fascinated well, I by I look that. at food, yeah. and then I don't eat it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, do you know what, I'm working out a lot, I'm doing a lot of cardio, and I'm, I'm actually eating a fair amount, but I've just completely stopped carbs and sugar, and it's, it's weirdly working very quickly. Why so. is it carbs and sugar? Carbs and sugar, Why? Yeah. And those are 10 pounds. Exactly. <laughs> How do you do it? No one asked it's me so to, easy. but it's I just so felt easy. like it required it, you yeah. know? It does. Yeah, yeah, to be, to be real. And it's that kind of dedication that's going to take you all the way all to the middle. All the way. Yeah. That's right, that's what I think, James, yeah. that's what I think. Half of all this could be you. <laughs> <laughs> The kingdom, the kingdom. <laughs> um, this is your third X-Men movie. Yes. And do you, but between them, you, you try to choose projects. Like, how do you keep it fresh each time? Uh, well, I've been lucky enough the, the three, the two times that I've played Charles before this, we've been sort of revising who he is, and mm -hmm. it's been quite a revisionist view of who he is. This time, so that's been very different anyway. This time, I'm playing him much more in the style and the fashion that we've seen him played before by somebody like Patrick Stewart, Sir Patrick Stewart, or in the kind of original cartoons and comic books. Um, and so again, that's fresh for me. If I'm going forward and we're doing more movies, it might st start to get stale and stink. Mm. But, um, <laughs> but, still but at the, the moment, character. I feel like I'm still being challenged to do new stuff, and I love him. I love Charles. He's all about empathy. He's so human in the his greatest power is that he can connect with others and that he cares about others and that he can really put himself in their shoes. And um, and for me, that's an amazing thing to play as an actor. It's incredible. Let's we have a, a clip of that. Yeah, yeah. We have Thank it right you. now. You, uh, of course, your character tells Raven, Jennifer Lawrence, that uh, you have plans for the school. So yeah. let's take a look at James McAvoy in X-Men Apocalypse. <laughs> Your food week. Today, we're learning how to take charge of our children's food, those yeah. ingrates. <laughs> and our next guest literally wrote the book on it. Please welcome the author of What to Feed Your Baby, Dr. Tanya Altman. <laughs> Baby is in the title of your book. This is healthy eating for kids of any age, no matter no matter any, any age. kids you have. It's best to start when they're young, but you can add these in at any age to create healthy eaters for life. So, mm. you, so what you eat very early on, that'll shape the way you eat and approach food forever. People are exactly. afraid to feed their kids, though. You know, you realize that they are afraid to introduce food to their kids for fear of... Choking, I'm not sure. Yes, they might right. be allergic. Mm -hmm. You're right, but you want to get all these healthy foods in early and a consistency that your baby can handle. Great. So, so first we have your scrambled eggs, which are a perfect single ingredient source of protein to help your kids concentrate throughout the day. You can eat it with your fingers or a fork. 
And this is what you mean, like the consistency. It can, it's yeah. soft, it's easy exactly, to chew. Exactly, mm. exactly. And avocado as well. When I go out with my little ones, I love to order it on the side of the restaurant, fork mash, and feed it to the baby. It's for all ages. Does that okay. apply for guacamole also? Does yes, that count? Guacamole Does that count? Is sure. It's totally healthy for kids. It's healthy source for brain and heart development. So parents often say, ooh, when I say to feed your kids prunes, but these are high fiber foods, important for the gut. And if you teach your preschoolers that prunes are giant raisins, right. uh -huh. you will prevent tummy aches for life. Yeah. Really? Salmon, I like to mash it up with some sweet potato for my little guy. Great for all ages, wild salmon twice a week. And is that something to introduce fish early? That's yeah. early. Easy. How many of you don't like eating fish? It's because your parents didn't get used to you eating it it's as your a parents child. Fault. My, yeah. You guys are fine. It's your parents' fault. My mother-in-law, I left, I left my baby who was only on breast milk at the time with my mother-in-law for the afternoon. I came back and he was eating spiced calamari. Like calamari, so and I was like, She was creating she his really, wide range of He's got a, a huge palate. Yep, she so did important. it. So nuts, nuts are a choking hazard, but we want to get nut protein in early now to prevent allergies later on in so life. So that's how so it's So I add a little creamy peanut butter to my baby's baby food oatmeal, mix it up, mm -hmm. add a little more liquid three times a week. Oh, so wow. there's all these different butters, because like, you know, there's schools that are, our, my kid's school is nut sensitive. You know, there's yes, no nut nuts sensitive. in the school. So there's like sunflower butter and all, the, all these different things. Is that, is that giving the same protein, the same health benefits as a nut butter? Nuts and seeds are both very healthy. So you can choose your favorite. If your child's allergic, you might have to choose one of the others. Okay, all right, all right, good, good. Um, listen, we have to take a commercial break. And when we come back, uh, we all know the hardest thing of all to get our kids to eat is their veggies. But Dr. Tanya has a trick. teaching us how to get our finicky kids to eat their veggies. How do we do that? If you want kids to eat veggies, you have to eat them yourself. So whatever veggies you're steaming up, grilling for yourself, throw them in the blender. You want to try it? You can just puree it for your little one. My toddler loves peas by the handful. Just feed it to them regularly and they will learn to like them. Should we try it? I want to eat some. Yeah. I love a pea. I like to have baby spoons. <laughs> Delicious, Delicious, right? Now, moving on to <laughs> berries and citrus. These little guys are packed full of vitamin C and other antioxidants and nutrients to prevent your kids from bringing colds home during the winter. And we all, mm. all know how those kids get sick all the time. So feed them berries when they're young. They will grow up to love them like dessert. And these little clementines are great for the lunchbox. They are so cute. What about frozen berries? You know, because sometimes fresh berries can, be, can get really expensive on a season. What about frozen exactly. berries? Exactly. I like to teach kids buy fruit in season, buy frozen berries out of season, throw them in the blender to make a smoothie or if you're making pancakes. Mm. Mm. Oh, pancakes is a good call. Yeah. <laughs> so do you know how to get kids? <laughs> notes. Good notes. <laughs> so if you want kids to get used to eating chicken, make sure you feed them chicken from your kitchen, not from a restaurant where it's round and fried, because mm -hmm. then their brain will learn that nuggets are chicken, and you don't want that. But it's so delicious. Yeah. No, it's really not. Okay, and right. beans, so what is that then? Games. Grilled chicken that's breast. Chicken. You can oh, order it for yourself chicken. at the restaurant and cut off a little piece for your child. This looks great. Go ahead, try it. Whole grains. Again, you want to get your kids used to whole grains, not white grains, whole grains, whole grain. Cereal is a great snack mm -hmm. food for toddlers. Mm -hmm. Little fingers love those. How do you get and in it's so oh, important for your gut. Cooking on a regular basis is plain water. That yep. way they'll grow up to be adults who like the taste of plain water. And if you want to add a little flavor, Live Take Charge of Your Food Week is presented by Insure. New patented Insure in Live has HMB plus 20 grams of high quality protein to help rebuild muscle and give you the strength and energy to keep doing what you love. Visit Live's website to learn more. If you want to know more about anything you see during the Take Charge of Your Food Week, just log on to our website, livekelly.com. Hey, you were so fun today. I just want to say thank you so I much. I love being here. Even now we have. And see, we'll be my co-host. We'll see you tomorrow. Um, an auction. I, uh, and okay. they're auctioning.
auctioning off everything from the restaurant. So I want to get those martini glasses. We yeah. were discussing them at length. About what? To, so you yes. want to get the glasses? Yes, we were discussing. We were discussing, and it's funny because I was talking to a lot of the waiters, and our waiter who had been there for um, six, 16 years, he's the new. He's the new. The guy. new guy. He's the new guy. So these waiters have been there for you know <laughs> decades and decades. So it's just so um, old. I'm school. hoping they pick up and start again. Well, there's apparently a new place they're moving to a yes. few blocks away, yep. but that owning a piece of history, like the glass, having your eye on the glasses, that's yes. so cool. Regis um, owns a Tiffany lamp from uh, Tavern on the Green yeah. because Tavern on the Green had an auction. Oh, that's and, great. And he and Joy uh, went and they got a Tiffany lamp, which I thought was so special. It's incredible. That's, yeah. They have a little piece of history like that. Yeah, to have something, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not setting my sights in you know, so high, but right. I would, if I could get a- A martini glass martini seems glasses. very I mean, that seems, attainable. seems doable. Yeah, a martini glass. Seems doable. Well, there was, there was an auction of a, a celebrity a long time ago. This is going back years and years and years. And, and the cast of all my children, a, a group of girls and I, we decided that we would go in together to get a piece of this memorabilia. Right. And we were outbid with all of our combined resources almost immediately. Like this, we were able to place the starting bid and then we were outbid. It goes crazy. It goes crazy, so I'm not- you eat, Speaking of outdoors, do you yeah. eat outdoors? Do you yeah, like outdoors? Yeah, I like an outdoor dining experience. Yeah, an outdoor dining, dining experience. Dining al fresco. Al fresco. <laughs> that's, what you, that's al fresco. That's, right? a, that's <laughs> the sign for fresco. Yeah. So, but there's some dangers outside. If you see this video, there's a video. No. Do we have the video of the, of the seagull, of the hungry seagull? Oh, well. Wait, look at this video. Yeah. Hey, well, he's not even outside. Look, he comes in, doors open. <laughs> Look at that guy. Look, and out he goes. Doesn't yep. even pay. Bye. And no one said a thing. I paid for the snacks I brought to the movie theater, and everyone's like, oh. You shouldn't do that, and that seagull didn't didn't pay anything. <laughs> you know, when we were in we were in Australia years ago. Michael, my son, was four years old. So this is how long ago it was. Lola was a baby. I was pregnant with Joaquin. He always says he's like, we have to go back to Australia because I didn't have a good view. That's what he said. <laughs> anyway, that's not the point. The point is, I was buying a hot dog. We were at uh, Warner Brothers World. They had like uh, their own like we have Disney World. They have Warner Brothers World there, and uh, I bought a hot dog and. And I'm looking at this sign and I sort of hand, I hand the hot dog to Michael, I hand it back to him. He's tiny, he's this big, I hand it to him. And I look at the sign and it shows like, it's like a mom and it's it's like a thing with- And so, so Colin Farrell <laughs> wants to be a lobster. I, I don't blame him one iota. Yeah. That sounds like a good choice. Um, did, now, now I'm a, you know, I'm here alone night on a town, you've heard my crazy story. Yeah. What did you do last oh, night? Oh, I actually did something last yes. night. I know, your, I know. They're like, did you, you live did? It up? I, yeah, we did, um, our friend, um, Barry Sonnenfeld and his wife, Susan Ringo, are in, in town, and uh, Mark shot a movie with Barry uh, last year um, over the summer, and so we, we made a plan to have a meal with them a while ago, and we went to the Four Seasons restaurant. It's the closing. famous That's closing. So you gotta get it in now. You gotta get it in now, and and we and I've never I've been to a lots of events at the Four Seasons, but I've never actually made it to A, the bar, or B, to get any food, because I'm always, like it's a it's work packed. event, and it's right. packed, and people like get you in a corner, and they're like, why can't I get on your show? Why does Gelman hate me? And I sit there, and I'm like. You don't hate anybody, do you? And I just stand, no, no but they always assume they that it's Gelman, yeah. right? So and when when it's all, in, in fact, it's art it's that art. hates, I, I sit know. there, and I go, it's really, it's yeah. not Gelman, it's art. So I, but, so I finally made it, into the restaurant with our friends. We sat, this restaurant has this beautiful reflection pool in the middle of the restaurant. Like a, it's a beautiful water feature. It's incredible. I had, you've been there. I was there I, for the same, when I was here um, over the summer with my- uh, So intimidating. So yeah. I think to take, to, you know, you wanna be, you know, you wanna acknowledge what came before, but mm -hmm. you wanna do your own thing. Did mm -hmm. you think about that? Did you watch? Well, luckily for me, I, I mean, First of all, because my character real, mm -hmm. so there was blazing a new yeah, new, like new so trail. I wasn't having to like go okay, well that's what so and so did, and 
oh my god. Um, you could create this yes, on your exactly. own. Yes, um, exactly. Also, it was written when the original miniseries um, came out, and I grew up in New Zealand, so I actually, I mean, I, I knew what Roots was, and I understood that significance sort of, you know, culturally and and whatever, but I hadn't watched it until this came along. So wow. this was the first time I was experiencing Roots. Wow. And so I basically, I sat in Wales and, you and know. It. Was there other research that, that the role I'm entailed? probably traumatized my small children because they <laughs> no. watched quite a lot of it with oh me. Oh my gosh. Well, watched. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and, and then read you know, Red Roots, which I had never done, and then an assortment of other books that were more specific to uh, to my character, which, again, I can't say too much about without completely ruining right. what's quite uh, a fantastic plot. It just looks sort of amazing. It, it looks starts incredible. May 30th, 9 p.m. on History. Make sure you check out Anna Packwin. After the last King of Scotland and Atonement, now he reprises his roles. Is that I, I true? grew up watching your show, yeah, the one of years. Really? I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> no totally. Kidding. It was um, it was quite a big deal in my house. Uh, it felt, even though it was about kids, it felt like much more adult in terms of its approach and stuff. So I felt quite grown up being allowed to watch it. That's Look at you, you so just, you mean, just puffed really, up. You were like, <laughs> you're, I'm such a fan of yours. You're oh, such you. an incredible actor. Thank and you. I mean, your films are amazing. I mean, uh, Last King of Scotland, I just, that's okay, why right. I kind of just fell in love yes, with you. Thank you. But you're able to bring. You know, whether it's Atonement or Wanted or the X-Men films, you are able to bring a real humanity mm -hmm. and simplicity to a huge film. Great. And it's really incredibly difficult to do, I would imagine, especially in X-Men, to be so... Um, to have us care about you so much oh, and be thanks. so grounded and give so much humanity in this insane world is really extraordinary. You're right, you are doing wonders for my ego right now. Yeah, so. well, <laughs> and, and I think you should get in touch with the Academy and tell them all that. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I guess uh, we yeah. should. Yeah, I've yeah. actually caught you. You know them. Yeah, Larry Academy. I've been, acting for, <laughs> been acting for 20 years, never had a sniff. You should help me out. Okay. Um, no, but it's, 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 it's You're it's very kind. Thank you. You're very kind. But you but, got your start in the theatre, is that right? I did, yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, well, I trained uh, uh, a classical theatre school oh. and then started doing theatre in Glasgow and in Edinburgh and round about Scotland and then a little bit down in London as well and then movies and TV started to <laughs> There's no really, there's no sun anymore. It's an outline of my son with just seagulls all over it. <laughs> so that's protecting the kids <laughs> with the seagulls. So they were like, literally do don't. not hand your child, <laughs> don't hand your small child food. The seagulls will come and they did. They descended. You know, he's fine now. Right. He's over it. 14 years later. And how does he feel about birds? Is he okay he's, with birds? You know, he's not a big seagull fan. Uh -huh. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not. Or gonna. hot dogs. Does he eat hot dogs? He still eats hot dogs. Or is he a hot always, dog? He's like. He, yeah, he looks around. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, be careful. <laughs> anyway, do you have cats? I know people, who here loves their cat, loves their cat more than that? So there, there are two, do you have a cat? I don't have a cat. Okay. So there are two kinds of people in the world. Cat lovers and everybody else, right? <laughs> so, no, right? You people who love their cat. I have my girlfriend loves her cat so much that she will send me pictures and she's like, you forgot to tell my cat how beautiful she was today. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I didn't You're forget. beautiful. <laughs> anyway, so um, this is amazing. This, uh, this guy loved his cat so much. This couple, Tara and Jason O'Mara. And they came up with this device because they were always watching their cats groom each other. And I guess they felt like left out of the action. Oh no. So they came up, they came up with this. Century and family run for generations, the Buccaneer in St. Croix is both historic and modern, blending old world charm with warm hospitality and the amenities expected by today's traveler. The Buccaneer is a premier destination resort for golf, tennis, water sports, weddings, honeymoons, and family vacations. Your prize is valued at approximately $9,500. Congratulations. Thank you. Now you get to help make the day of a lucky member of our studio audience who will receive eight play settings of American-made fine china from Lennox. Ooh. Valued at more than $500. How much more? We can't say. <laughs> <laughs> Please pick a number between 1 and 229. 131. <laughs>
take charge of your food week with tips for keeping your kids healthy. James McAvoy. And coming up next, Anna Paquin. as well as the runner-up couple, which will both be decided tonight. Yeah. So tonight. tonight, that is happening. Gotta check it out. And from the uh, series Arrow, Stephen Amell. Yeah. Yes. And Seal. Seal. Seal is gonna be here. So you're Forward, we're doing more movies. It might st start to get stale and stink. Mm. But, um, <laughs> but, still but at the, the moment, character. I feel like I'm still being challenged to do new stuff. And I love him. I love Charles. He's all about empathy. He's so human in the... His greatest power is that he can connect with others and that he cares about others and that he can really put himself in their shoes. And um, and for me, that's an amazing thing to play as an actor. It's incredible. Let's we have a, a clip of that. Yeah, yeah. We have Thank it right you. now. You, uh, of course, your character tells Raven, Jennifer Lawrence, that uh, you have plans for the school. So yeah. let's take a look at James McAvoy in X-Men Apocalypse. <laughs> Your food week. Today, we're learning how to take charge of our children's food, those yeah. ingrates. <laughs> and our next guest literally wrote the book on it. Please welcome the author of What to Feed Your Baby, Dr. Tanya Altman. <laughs> Baby is in the title of your book. This is healthy eating for kids of any age, no matter no matter any, what, any age. kids you have. It's best to start when they're young, but you can add these in at any age to create healthy eaters for life. So mm. you, what you eat very early on, that'll shape the way you eat and approach food forever. People are exactly. afraid to feed their kids, though. You know, you realize that they are afraid to introduce food to their kids for fear of. Choking, I'm not sure. What, yes, they might right. be allergic. Mm -hmm. You're right, but you want to get all these healthy foods in early in a consistency that your baby can handle. Great. So, so first we have your scrambled eggs, which are a perfect single ingredient source of protein to help your kids concentrate. Then berries out of season, throw them in the blender to make a smoothie or if you're making pancakes. Mm. Mm. Oh, pancakes is a good call. Yeah. <laughs> so do you know how to get kids? <laughs> note. Good notes. <laughs> So if you want kids to get used to eating chicken, make sure you feed them chicken from your kitchen, not from a restaurant where it's round and fried, because mm -hmm. then their brain will learn that nuggets are chicken, and you don't want that. But it's so delicious. Yeah. No, it's really not. Okay, and right. beans, so what is that then? Games. Grilled oh, chicken breast. Chicken. You can order oh, it for yourself chicken. at the restaurant <laughs> and cut off a little piece for your child. This looks great. Go ahead, try it. Whole grains. Again, you want to get your kids used to whole grains, not white grains, whole grains, whole grain. Cereal is a great snack mm -hmm. food for toddlers. Mm -hmm. Little fingers love those. How do you get and in it? And it's so oh, important for your gut. Cooking on a regular basis is plain water. That yep. way they'll grow up to be adults who like the taste of plain water. And if you want to add a little flavor, Live Take Charge of Your Food Week is presented by Insure. New patented Insure in Live has HMB plus 20 grams of high quality protein to help rebuild muscle and give you the strength and energy to keep doing what you love. Visit Live's website to learn more. Oh my God. Um, you could create this yes, on your exactly. own. Yes, um, exactly. Also, it was written or in the original miniseries um, came out and I grew up in New Zealand. So I actually, I mean, I, I knew what Roots was and I understood that significance sort of, you know, culturally and, and whatever, but I hadn't watched it until this came along. So wow. this was the first time I was experiencing Roots, wow. and so I basically I sat in Wales and you know. Was there other research that that the role I'm entailed? Probably traumatized my small children because they <laughs> yeah. watched quite a lot of it with oh me. Oh my gosh! Well, watched. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and and then read you know read Roots, which I had never done, and then an assortment of other books that were more specific to uh, to my character, which again I can't say too much about without completely ruining right. what's quite. Oh, fantastic plot. It just looks sort of amazing. It, it looks starts incredible. May 30th, 9 p.m. on History. Make sure you check out Anna Paquin. It's a four-night event. Anna Paquin, Coming up next, James McAvoy's here. He started in films such as The Last King of Scotland and Atonement. Now he reprises his role as Professor X in the new film X-Men Apocalypse. Please welcome James McAvoy.
backstage. This is what I was told backstage. They're like, oh, the cat, it's a shame. It used to work, but it doesn't move or it doesn't do anything anymore. We tried changing its batteries and it doesn't work, so we took the batteries out. So this is a battery-free cat that is now just... This is amazing. I would have this cat. I would use that. This, this is the is greatest great cat, cat ever. Wait till it, uh, wait till it takes a... a, a, a it has a lot of talent. Yeah, right. wait till it... Wait till it... Oh, my God. Needs to use the litter box. I'm going to move your cat, Gelman, okay? okay? I'm going to put your cat over Thank here. Thank you so much. Be it's, nice. No, I love it. I love it. It's, it's nice just, and groomed now. No, it's making me nervous that it doesn't have a battery in it, and it's meowing and moving all over. What does it do when it's battery powered, when it's on? <laughs> Woo! It's like, literally like, yes, you rang? Yeah. <laughs> I don't need a battery, I'm a cat. <laughs> we have a huge show today. We have a huge show. <laughs> oh my God, the cat's still going. Big, big show. Anna Paquin's here. Anna yes. Paquin. Uh, we have James McAvoy, who is here. Yeah. Phenomenal actor. Can you take charge of your food week when you find out what are the essential foods for your child? Oh my gosh, any fussy eaters here? Yeah. What about, oh, yo, I had a feeling. Yeah, you look like you might be. I feel like you're all kinds of trouble. Yeah.